to everybody here tonight and to everybody tuning in from home. I affectionately refer to this time as spiral season when the seasons are changing, seasonal depression is kicking in, and we, me, I start freaking out a little bit. So anyway, hello. Thank you so much for being a part of this tonight. Thank you Live by Live for having us. And um, my name is Jojo. I have spent the past few years of my life trying to understand myself, my habits, my behaviors, uh, understand where I get some of those things, some baggage, and, uh, and really just trying to get a grasp on my own mental health. And I, a, a part of that curiosity involved me writing a project about it, which was called Trying Not to Think About It, which came out a couple months ago. And, <laughs> and I wanted a, a platform, a, a way to be able to talk about some things that I had been feeling and to bring that to you, talking about some of the lyrics, but also exploring and opening up the conversation around mental health because it's something that has been on all of our minds more so than ever because of the past two years and what we've all collectively been through. So I would like to introduce to you, first of all, my guitar player, Chris. <laughs> We're gonna be doing some songs yes. together later. <laughs> yeah. Yes, yes, yes. We're, we're going to be doing a few selections from, from Trying Not to Think About It. And this is my friend, Mondo, Dr. Mondo. He would, he would introduce himself as Mondo, Mondo's maybe. Mondo's just fine, yeah, yeah. But, but he is the coolest doctor I've ever met. And growing up, coming from a working class background, me, I, uh, I didn't grow up around people going to therapy. It wasn't necessarily... We were talking about our feelings, but there was a bit of a stigma around the idea of talking to a therapist. I can think, I can picture my uncle right now being like, I don't need a freaking shrink. Like I, you know, I just talk to my, my friends. And you know, so uh, Dr. Mondo is revolutionizing the way that we think about mental health and challenging the systems that are in place, particularly in our country that we all live in. And, um, and making it a lot more down to earth and accessible. And we've been working together for the past few months. And I recently embarked on a mini tour. And before I did that mini tour, we spent a few days doing something called brain spotting, which is a type of therapy. And it's been a really important part of my healing. And I think I've rambled enough. I'd love for you to, to, to take over from here and let the people know who you are and what you do. Yeah, I'm, I'm just someone that grew up in my own way, like you, know, like you, struggling with my mental health. And I had a dad that struggled with his to the point that it, it took his life. He was bipolar, struggled from alcoholism. And uh, so I was born in this game. You know, I had no choice but to acknowledge Same. it. And uh, you know, I just knew from a young age I wanted to help people. And then I got to this field, and I said I had one real simple thing. It's just I want to help people heal. I want to help people transform all the way. And what I found was a system that was unaccessible. When I say a system, most of us that actually are really needing therapy or healing, we can't get access to it. And even if we can, usually it's from someone that we sit across from that we feel like doesn't understand us or doesn't relate to us. And on top of that, the standard of care to me is just not excellent. And so my goal um, and why I eventually went to school to get a doctor of psychology, start my own practice, start a foundation is to say, look, we need to raise the standard of care. There are so many people right now, especially post-COVID, that are hurting and they're in need. And I know there are people that are watching today. I know they're right here in these seats and they're in those seats too. All of us can relate. This is one of the very few things that we all have our own personal experience with, struggling with self-doubt, anxiety, depression, my goal is to destigmatize that in my career and what I do as a human being. Part of it's by telling my own story. And it's also about figuring out a way to get access to those that need it the most but can't get access to transformational mental health experiences. So tonight's event uh, is, is, is brought to you by our foundation, Cheat Code Foundation. Um, Rob Santini from Warner Records, shout out to Rob. That's right, even a little louder would be good. That's right. Rob is a human being that had a, a connection point to my foundation. 
and he's the reason this happened, and I'm so grateful. Every single person that I get invited into their lives to get a chance to work with, whether it's athletes, musicians, whoever it is, the, the number one thing I could say is that they're incredible human beings. This woman to the right of me is an incredible human being. She has a gift. Y'all know about the gift, right? And if you don't, you're about to find out about the gift. Uh, when I heard her during our time together, when I heard her sing, I swear to you, it, it sounded and it felt like an angel singing and ministering to me. It was just something else. She may not tell you a lot about it, but taken out of context, we all seem strange. She's been through some stuff. Her music tells you, but also this industry, this world that she got brought into from a young age, her gift at times put her in vulnerable places where she experienced hurt and trauma. What I love about her is that she's using her platform to tell that story. JoJo's story is a story of someone that just from a young age had that it that was undeniable, had a moment in a season of pain that made her relatable, but has this transcending moment that we're all witnessing now. If she were stock, I tell all you to put your money in this stock right here, because Warner Records realized that everyone realized that she's doing nothing but going up because she's got a gift to give people. This album is a gift. This EP is a gift because it's giving us all an opportunity to feel like we're not alone. And so tonight is really an opportunity for us to come together and celebrate the fact that we have so many differences, but we got one thing in all in common, and that's that when we hear these lyrics tonight, we're going to relate to them. So whether you're sitting in the audience, whether you're listening at home, we want to tell you you are not alone. Another thing is, whether we know you or not, we love you, and there are others that love you. And this is an opportunity for you to hear something that you connect with, but also to experience hope, because there is hope. I think we need a lift, right? Every time I'm around you, you won't make me cry. Hey. <laughs> because it's what I need to hear, too. I, I know that spoke to somebody who's watching right now and, and somebody in the audience. So, Mondo, well, thank you for being you. Well, listen, Ooh. listen, what we really need to hear, how many people want to hear some music off this incredible EP right about now? Yeah, yeah. Show us the gift, Joe. <laughs> no pressure. So, I chose a few songs that I thought would be cool to, to perform and then talk about. And the first one is Spiral Season. And um, I, I wrote this because my mind can be a dangerous place. And as I started to open up to my collaborators that I was making this project with, I realized how, how not alone I was in, in feeling like that and how I could just go from one negative thought to a, a worse thought and then, and then I'm just you know, wanting to stay in bed all day. So. It's, it's interesting how sometimes those of us who have the biggest capacity to love can be the hardest, the most hateful on ourselves. And that's what this is about. Thank God, because that light is so bright. Yeah, is that better? Oh my God, that's so much better for me. <laughs> okay, how, how, do you, how do you sound? You good? Yeah. <laughs> Pedestals for everyone, but she's on a shelf. Emotion comatose. You know how that shit goes. Yeah, love a girl, loves her overthink it to death. Underwhelmed by everything that she's ever did. Full cups are half empty. That's how I see it. Mm, usually, people compliment my positivity, but my sanity ain't always there for me. It's like that when you're your biggest enemy Yes, I'm having ice in my savion I'm having one of those nights where I need it right now You know that I can't chill Never could, probably never will I, I could do something nice for myself But I don't, I keep on starting fight for myself All downhill It's spiral season again Ooh, 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 ooh. 
If you feel it, you can move to it a little bit. You can sing to it. Some of you know it. <laughs> yeah, I see, I see some, some fans in the audience. So if you guys know it, please don't be shy. Because other people will be shy. But I know you guys don't have to be shy. <laughs> okay, so um, the next one. B.I.D.? Is that what it was? Is it? Um, yeah, thank you. It's BID, and th this one is more about being there for somebody, even if you're in the midst of your own, you know, funk, being there for somebody else because you know how it feels to be in that dark space and, uh, and just letting them know that they're not alone. So it's called bringing it, you know, kind of bringing it back down. When, when you feel heightened, you got to shake it off and bring it back down to earth. See how you're feeling and I need you to know that you can trust me to help you let go. I'm making it easy, hey. Seems like most people I know hold everything in just because they don't want to be judged. They'd rather be left on Maybe we could sit down, get to know each other if you want to be around. I'm really good at bringing it down, bringing it down, bringing it down. Maybe we could sit down, get to know each other if you want to be around. I'm really good at bringing it down, bringing it down. So you can breathe. Just a little sample. Yeah. Just a little sample. Thank you for those yes and shit, Mondo. Just the hype man back here. Yeah, I appreciate that. <laughs> the next little sampling I want to do is uh, a song called Feel All Right. And um, I feel like a lot of fans really like that one. Okay, okay, cool. Good, because I'm like, am I, I want to make you happy. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a little verse chorus of this, too. Two different angles, but it's the same, though, high and low. Willing and able to walk away, but it's comfortable. So is it all in my head? It's not making sense, but it's true. Do I love you this much or is this just something to do? Cause Lord knows I really want to believe you're going to change my mind. I go now.
talking to shit. I don't wanna sabotage this, but love ain't how they advertise it. I just hope you understand it. I know you'll be talking to your friends. Ooh, yeah, tired, and it feels one sided. Little miss guided, but I ain't looking for no. I know I'll be fucking up the plans. I just wanna say it, even though I thought I was right. I was going off that night. Sometimes I'm not that nice. Even though I'm not that tight, I just had to call for forgiveness. I know it's at least in double digits, and I do it all the time, yeah. Thinking you can read my fucking mind, yeah. I keep assuming you're gonna do shit that might break my heart. So I keep on my guard, and I know it's confusing. How I put you through with my past and my scars Still make it hard, I am So, ooh, ooh, ooh. Always the worst, I assume ooh, ooh, ooh. Always the worst, I am I've been sipping on like yeah. I'm just trying to pick a fight, yeah, yeah. Wonder if it's real life, yeah. If I'm just in a mood, I know this can't be safe. Arguing on a freeway, making shit about me, babe, on your B day. I thought I was right, I was going off that night. Sometimes I'm not that nice. Even though I'm not that type, I just had to call for forgiveness. I know it's at least in double digits, and I do it all the time, yeah. Thinking you can read my friggin' mind, yeah. I keep assuming you're gonna do shit that might break my heart. So I keep up my guard, and I know I put you through with my past and my scars. Still make it hard, I am. So Thank you guys. Give it up for JoJo, right? We're gonna have a conversation uh, like, like we typically would just about some of what we heard. And I think those of you out there too, some of you have a chance to share some of your thoughts, but you know, here's what I love. You know, there's this feeling that I hear in those songs where it's like, how many people can relate to this, by the way? So much of what I hear in spiral season, feel all right, worst, I assume, is, has anyone ever been in a time or a season where you felt like there was this dark cloud over you and that like you knew the real person was there? Because I hear so much of that like in those, in those songs. That's right. That's it's like, what it is. I know, I know it's there, but... I can even observe that it's not myself, right? How many people can relate to that, right? Yeah, that's just such a universal thing. Yes, thank you for that honesty and for not being afraid to raise your hands because me too, so much. So when you, wrote, when you wrote this EP and you wrote those songs that you just performed, were you speaking from the heart in that moment or was that like a repetitive pattern that you found yourself in and you were just frustrated with it or both? Both, because I mean, even before we're, we're sitting here today, most of you don't know that we just did a little brush up of like a little session before we sat here. And I, I was kind of just getting back into that, that place of ruminating, having negative thoughts and yeah. needing to brush back up on the, the tools that I know I have you know, in place and that I've learned how to, um, how to be, are you pointing to, should I look here? Okay, <laughs> hello. Um, so, yeah, I, I, was, I was annoyed at, at myself very much for falling into the same pattern again. At the end of last year, I found myself in a really dark place where I was questioning everything about myself and I was just 
wondering what's the point? What's the point of trying when it hasn't, you know, I, I don't have that much faith in systems, you know, in big business and things like that. What, what is, what, what am I doing? What, what am I doing with my life? And that's where I was writing these songs from. My coping mechanisms hurt other people. You know, uh, Feel All Right, for example, is about how I have used relationships, like just burrowing into a relationship and making that my whole life or my comfort zone, you know, s sex, all these different ways of feeling okay. Basically, I was like, I realize I'll do anything to feel all right. And, and I know she's not alone, right? We, we will do just anything. It's a basic human need that we have to have a sense of belonging, to feel like we're loved and we have a sense of importance. And when we go through those seasons, one common thing that anxiety, depression, whatever it is, it brings upon this heaviness that has us even questioning ourselves, right? And I hear in your music then that you were questioning yourself. You know, go into as much as you are comfortable just giving some context. I said it earlier, I'll say it a thousand times. Taken out of context, we all seem strange. So when you put context to some of the experiences that we're having, it really makes sense. In our work, I remember thinking early on, like, like you really lost your voice, which was so poetic to what your gift is, right? But you went through a season of so much, essentially, attack on self-doubt and your character and maybe you could speak to even some of the roots of where some of those feelings came from. So fame and success is weird for anyone. And this is not me being like, oh, fame is terrible. I'm not saying that, but it's, it's particularly dangerous for a 13 year old who, you know, who still has a developing sense of self and self worth and what, what makes you special. Um, so when I had my first number one at, at 13, and that was like, what, what after that? So that A number one at 13. Is that crazy or what? Think about that. What were we doing at 13? Listening, the, to, her. listening to her? <laughs> Some of us finished second runner-up in Little League, right? That was a <laughs> highlight of our day. She's out here producing number ones, getting her flowers from Whitney Houston and Mariah Carey. Continue. And that was everything. And I was like, whoa! tell me nothing I'm the shit so like I've had this inflated sense of self and then through things that went and then I, I went on to have an amazing success with my second album as well you know another huge hit from that and then then things took a turn with the label that I was signed to and because as you've illuminated for me and reminded me that when we're kids we're trying to make sense of things we're trying to make things we're trying to understand the world so when my label was going through things, I took that to mean I must be doing something wrong. This is, yeah, I took it personally. I took, I must not be good enough. My intrinsic worth is not enough. I'm not doing the right things. So you wore it, like it was your issue. Yeah, it was, it was my issue, even though there were many years of politics going on behind the scenes that I wasn't really privy to, nor could I understand, you know, as a, a teenager. Um, and to this day, it's, it's still so confusing and, um, and just like this nebulous kind of gray area that is just, even when people bring it up, I'm like, I wish I could explain it, but it's beyond b reason. Like it's, you know, just a lot of things that were caught up during that time. So, so that I think really impacted my, um, the, the, the way that I saw the world and, and saw myself and forgetting exactly what the question was See how you get lost in it, though, for a minute? That, that tells me, too, that, you know, I was going to say that everyone in this room, if we wrote down what's the definition of trauma, you would all have a different definition. Some of it's based on cultural background. Some of it's based in the households we were raised in. But I'm going to tell you, like, we could put all that to shame and just say that the body keeps the score, and we can't hide the fact that Things that are physically and emotionally dangerous, the body's job is to keep us safe, and it programs that information. So what she's talking about, and if, you, if you're relating to any of that, there's a really good chance that you've experienced trauma. So many of us are afraid to even own that, right? Because we've been told so many times to suck it up, or that like that's for weak people, or 
trauma is only for people that went to war or experienced sexual assault. Here's the reality, the body tells a different story. So much of the loops that we find ourselves in in these negative spiral seasons come from unhealed and unresolved trauma. And right now we have an opportunity to heal that because of the advancements in the field. So I believe when I hear that, even that moment where you pause, it's like your brain gets lost almost in yeah. what is almost hard to explain. And sometimes we have to just take the first step and own, I went through some traumatic shit. You know what I'm saying? Like we, I went through something. Own that. That's usually the first step. And I think that once we do, the healing is allowed to start happening. So when I hear your story of what you went through, that's trauma, which means there's symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder that you experience at times. And it makes perfect sense when you put it in that context. And what's interesting, because now, now I'm remembering we were talking about losing my voice. So first it was that like I, I was in a contract where I didn't own my voice. I've talked about this for many years, so I don't want to like go too deep into it, but that was frustrating, confusing, and I was upset that that could even be possible. How could my voice come from me, but then I'm not able to do things with it? I need to get approval that I'm not getting. And then it's interesting how somehow along the line, when I did become free and I did um, get out of that situation, that I lost that connection to my gut though. And I ended up losing my actual voice. I ended up uh, f having a, a total disconnect. And it, maybe it was as if I was trying to make what happened right. Maybe it was like, well, I'm not very good anyway. I can't hit those notes or I can't do this, you know? So maybe it was a subconscious thing. I, I don't know, but I just, I do know that I was in, I was in a lot of emotional pain, feeling responsible for myself, for my mom, for my dad, and feeling like nobody is gonna take care of me if I don't. And that, that was a scary thought, which I know plenty of kids and kids who have become adults understand that. And I, I really, really internalized that to the point of paralysis into where I just was like, well, if I can't do something perfectly, then I'm just not gonna do it. Yeah. Perfectionism is you know, a serious uh, aspect of anxiety, uh, and, right, anxiety or? A hundred percent. Unresolved trauma shows up in so many ways. Only in the West have we decided that when you have something in your mind going astray, you go see this mental doctor. And then when you have a physical thing, you go see a physical doctor. Eastern medicine for so long, holistic medicine is practiced that the body, the mind, and the spirit are all interconnected, Ooh. right? So we miss that. So there are literally people in this audience and people listening right now that are experiencing physical symptoms yes. of their trauma. Yes. There are some of us that have digestive problems. There are some of us that are experiencing brain fog, uh, you know, uh, spiritual dis-ease as a symptom of the trauma that we have yet to fully release. When I met you, it wasn't that long ago, I remember you saying one of the things is I can't hit certain notes. And uh, this is just more as a testament to how the body works as she cleared and healed some of her trauma, she started to hit the notes again. That tells you that in order for us to perform, we have to be able to self-express. Sometimes when we experience trauma, it tells us it's not safe to be ourselves. So much of what I watch you doing is reclaiming the true essence of who you are. And I know for us, we talk about the inner child. Maybe you could shed some light on that. Uh, what's it been like for you to get back in touch with that younger version of you, because that younger version of you. She was, you know, unafraid of anything. We were just anything. talking about how, because I know your little Mondo, your, right. your, your young boy self, also believed that you could, you know, dig to the other side of the world. Just that unwavering, 100%. just that, 100%. you know, what we would think is just a crazy belief, but how beautiful is that to really believe that you can dig a hole in the ground and get to the other side of the world? That's what I believed. And I believed that. I had the audacity of, of self-belief to sing my way, sing in front of anybody. I would put a hat on the ground in Providence, Rhode Island, or in Boston, Massachusetts, and I'd be like, people are gonna stop and sing. Even if these people don't stop, the next people will stop. Like, I just, I didn't have the, the hang-ups or the, the onion layers that have, that have built up over the years, and, and getting back in touch with that inner child is our true essence. 
And yes. and as corny as that sounds, because I, I understand that it might sound like, woo woo, I really believe it so wholeheartedly that that that's who we were before we became, you know, uh, people around us did the best that they could, but they tried to protect us from their own self, you know, their that's, world That's called view. projection. Uh-huh. Yeah, projection. They projected their self-limiting beliefs and fears and all that stuff onto us. And because we were malleable little putty, we, yep. we, we, that helped form us. So it's been a really interesting process. And, um, and even like knowing that I can trust myself as an adult to, uh, to nurture that, that little girl that was in me who maybe needed guidance in a different way. Because I feel like so often we'll say to ourselves, like, oh, I need to talk kinder to myself. Anyone ever said that? Like, I, better, I should be nicer yeah. to myself. That's a really hard thing to do in itself. But when you take a moment to realize, would I talk that way to my child, who I love? Would I speak that way? Most of us would say, no way. So when we start to look at that younger version of self and say, in some ways, I've lost touch with that person. And when we start to investigate, what was that little guy, that little girl, what were they all about, right? What was their essence? Reconnecting to that, I believe, while integrating the wisdom of the frontal lobe of the brain, because eventually we grew up to learn reasoning and you know some, some good stuff came from being an adult, mm -hmm. but we integrate the two, and that's when we find our true calling, our true purpose. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's key for all of us to get back to that, and I see you doing that more and more. And, and, and like we talked about, it's not just an, a place that you arrive at. Like, you really need to use the tools to, to make it a practice, just like writing or just like anything that you do every day. I mean, it became a practice to brush your teeth every day because you learned that that was something that was going to keep your teeth in your head and like it's good for you. And just like taking care of your mental health is just as important as taking care of your oral health and, and everything, your physical health, you know, it's, um, but it's something that we neglect the most, I think. So I just, I'm happy that we live in a time where these conversations are not as woo-woo or, or strange. I mean, it's, it's more commonplace. I, I like that this is the time that we're in. And it's partly because of Nights Like Tonight, which is why we thank you so much for being here, because I believe it's going to be platforms like JoJo's and not only writing an EP like this, but making space for a time like tonight, live by live, Warner Records coming together and saying, we see this as a moment, right? This is a moment. Our nation just got through some incredibly horrible times through COVID, and I think everyone had a leveled playing field when it came to what it was like to be quarantined and isolated. We realized we kind of need each other, mm. right? We kind of need each other, and, we, and our mental health does matter. So now's a moment for us to change the system, change advocacy, you know, I, I do want to, uh, in a moment, um, I believe there may be some people in the audience that have re re responses to some of the things they've heard tonight, some of the lyrics. In a moment, we're going to set that up so you guys can, can share that. But I want to talk about advocacy because this partnership between you and I is really a movement. We're all a part of a movement, and, and I invite all of you to be a part of that too. It's a movement to destigmatize mental health. We call our organization, our nonprofit, cheat code, like video game cheat code, because we, we know, and some of us know, that actually working on your mentals is a cheat code. Anyone ever got some healing? Anyone ever got some clarity, some peace, and go, that's a cheat code, right? It's a level up. It's a level up. They don't want us to have it, but <laughs> it's a level up. That's why not everyone can get it. Think about what it would do if everyone had access to it. That's a different story. Let's talk about advocacy real quick. Uh, when you think about, the, I just want your reaction to this. So this is just some, some information that we know. ACEs, Adverse Childhood Experiences, is a score that they use a lot of times to connect funding to. People in underserved, non-served communities, particularly black and brown communities, particularly poor communities, have higher adverse childhood experiences, someone going to prison, experiencing verbal abuse, sexual abuse, physical abuse, those factors are linked to a shorter life expectancy. They're linked to making shorter money, about every negative outcome you could imagine. And yet, those folks have the hardest time accessing mental health. One of the biggest systemic 
inequalities that we don't hear enough about is the inequality in the mental health system. So when you hear that, just as a human being, what's your reaction to that? I'm angry. I'm angry at, at, at the systems that are in place, and it makes me want to do something. And I think that when everybody who just heard that, you know, I know you want to do something. I know that you, you know, we, we all feel compelled by injustices. And it's, um, there's some, it, it, that's not right, you know, if the, if those adverse childhood experiences are so obviously, um, you know, more, more potent in, in certain communities, why are those the most underserved? Something is not adding up. So it just seems like where f the funds are, mo this just misappropriation of funds and That's things it. have to change. That's it. So probably from a legislative level, right? And I know that the work that you're doing with cheat codes has a lot to do with that. So yeah. please, please let the people know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, involved. look, we're not the only one. I'm just saying all of us need to do, you know, the first step is silence. When they silence our voice, right, we can't do anything. So if we believe and buy into this lie that we're all alone, and that we're the only ones suffering or something's wrong for, uh, with us for going through a mental health experience, then we bought the first lie that will keep the current system in place. So let's first know one thing, we are not alone. It's a human experience to, to experience spiral seasons, times like that. Okay, number two, then we advocate for the change we need. One of the hardest things in the world to do is find a therapist. Anyone ever tried to do that before? Man, that's tough, you're like hitting people up, you know, it, it's almost like before marijuana was legalized in California. Now, that's a different story. <laughs> you got a plug? Hey, you got a plug, man? Yeah. yeah. No, I know this guy, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he's expensive, though. Uh, we have to change those things by advocating for it. And I'll tell you, I have a lot of cynicism in the system because for a long time, I believe, I hate to say it, that the system isn't always set up to help people that are low in the totem pole. Right. So... If we know that's true, then we have to continue to fight, yes, the public way, and ask for the state of California and the United States and the federal government to make mental health more of a priority, more accessible. But we also have to do sometimes the old school way of just pass the hat around, right? Some of us in this room have the ability to help transform lives. I will argue that you can give people in underserved communities access to Chromebooks. That's amazing. They need it. You can give them access to bicycles and all other sorts of resources, but you wanna know what the greatest thing you can give them? You can give them healing. And that's what our foundation, Cheat Code Foundation, we're not the only one, but that's what we believe is the key. So yeah, we gotta raise some money privately and we have to make a change in the public space. And one of the core tenets that we believe in is people like yourself with a platform sharing your story Again, can we just give it up for JoJo for using her platform for a cause like this? Thank you, Mondo. So I know, is there people that have questions out there? There's a roaming microphone. It's a roaming microphone. This is, anyone seen the show Donahue? That's gonna age you real quick. There's like three laughs. Okay, we know how old the room is. Here we go. Hi. Hi. So um, my question is gonna be, um, what was the hardest thing to overcome when making, trying not to think about it? The hardest thing to overcome was mm, my self-resistance and then the, the fact that I, the idea of making a whole project about mental health, depression and anxiety wasn't necessarily the sexiest thing to my record label, <laughs> to my partners at Warner, but I had to, I had to say, I have to, I want to do this. This is, this is important. Like, if I don't make this project, I don't know if I'll be able to make a next project. Because I was in such a dark place, I needed to write through it. And I didn't want to have the experience that I've had through my whole career, which is of writing and recording hundreds of songs and having them never come out. So for my own sanity, I couldn't do that again. I was like, I already have some songs that I think are amazing. And even if this resonates with a handful of people, that will be that will be what the purpose of this was. So it, it was kind of me like um, releasing some fear, I guess, around always trusting that other people know better than me because again, when you've been doing it for so long and you didn't even like your first single, then you're like, oh, well, I just don't know what I'm doing, you know? And um, so it was kind of like unlearning those, 
lies or un- unbelieving those lies and trust, trusting myself that that this will reach the right people and that um, putting something as vulnerable as that out into the world can be, I, I hope that it is of being of service to somebody who feels alone, who feels unheard, who feels that they don't know how to speak about these things. I hope that they can hear some of what they feel in this project. So I would say it was getting out of my own way, my own fears, my own, you know, uh, yeah. You were listening to your in, your intuition, even without knowing it's, you know, we got three brains. We got one right here, we got one right here, and we got one right here. And the, the old way of thinking in Native American uh, communities were that use the brains in that order, right? Here, here, and here. They say the problem with the West is sometimes we get so caught up in here. Some of us right now yeah. have an intu- intuitive knowing that we're called to do something, but we're, we've talked ourselves out of it, right? And what I love is that sometimes it takes being in a place where you feel like, you know what, my chips are in, like it's either gonna be this or not. I remember you telling me I had to just get this off my heart. I had to write it before I could do the next thing. I just had to get it out. And that came from an intuitive knowing. And uh, I just think it's so important to listen to that. That's an amazing question. Do we have another one too? Yeah, thank you right for here. that. Yeah. Hello. Hi, love. Um, so my question is, one thing that I've always connected to you with is your vulnerability. And I wondered if your ability to be vulnerable is something that helped you throughout your life, or is it something that you've had to like draw back on in the public eye? Mm. And do you think that peop- you should encourage people to be more vulnerable about things that, f- that they are feeling and that they are dealing with, or do you have to be a little more specific about what you share? That is so good. Yeah, that was a really great question. Wow. Both of the questions were great. That, w- that was lit. Um, I think that everybody is different. Like, we, we all have so many similarities, but everybody is different in your threshold of, um, like, I can, I can feel embarrassed about things, certain things. Like, I'm actually not that embarrassed about being vulnerable, about saying, like, uh, I've, uh, you know, I've cheated and I've been cheated on. Like, I don't really feel the need to hide that, but some people might. And there might be some things that, that I do hide. There are some things that I hide, like when it comes to um, things that concern other people. Like, you know, there's been a lot of things in in my family life uh, growing up and everything that I have never spoken about and that have really, that I've spent a lot of time in therapy talking about. And but because I feel a, a obligation to the privacy of, of other people that it also impacts, that's kind of where I draw the line. And like in relationships, I don't know, I've been a little bit more like on the gram with, you know, like who I'm dating these days because I just, the older I get, the less I'm capable of giving an F. Sorry, there's a little boy here now, so I'm not going to curse anymore. <laughs> but the less I'm capable of like caring, really, about things like that. Um, but I would encourage people to be as vulnerable as they feel comfortable being because I do think that you'll be rewarded with your vulnerability Amen. because then you'll connect with people more. When you are, when you open up about things, whether it's like, yo, I'm struggling in school or like, sometimes I just don't want to get up and do my job or like, you know what? I hate my parent or like, you know, even if you don't really, and it's like, but that's how you feel like just in a moment or, you know, I'm Own pissed. That. Own it. Owning it. And then you'll, you'll find that you are so not alone. So I do think that, I mean, I, I think vulnerability is fantastic. I think it's a superpower because then you, you connect with people in, in a way that you might find surprising. So I love it, but don't be vulnerable to the point where like, then you're walking around and you feel like, to, to like an open wound, I'm used to being a bit of an open wound, so I don't mind, but you know, ease into it if you've never been vulnerable before, but go for it as well. I don't know, I'm just saying things now. I, I, think, I think like you said, in the work of Brene Brown, she's so amazing. I'm yeah. sure so many people know of her work, but she talks about uh, vulnerability being the kryptonite to shame. Yes. And shame is this feeling, you know, guilt is this feeling I made a mistake. Shame is this feeling that I am a mistake. Oh. Right? So we really own it to our core. So when we're vulnerable and we own it to ourselves out loud as well to others, there's this freedom that comes from it. Um, If you want a quick life hack, 
and you really want to find who your tribe is. You know, people use that term, find your tribe. I actually like it. I think cliches are cliches for a reason. Mm. Uh, find your tribe. If, if you want to find your tribe real quick, just start keeping it 100 with everyone. Okay? Oh, I love that. Just be yourself. Guess what? You'll find out real quick who rocks within you and who doesn't. Oh, my God. That's the best life And now, hack. if you want to draw out life in relationships, try to people please. Okay? That's a life hack to having a collection of friends that you really aren't even sure if they like you. Do you oh like me? God. Like, Just be yourself. And either they're going to roll with you or not. So whatever it is that you do, just be yourself. It's a quick like life hack to finding your tribe real quick. Okay, that was a priceless gem he just dropped. And I know so many can relate. I mean, uh, I know some of us are around the same age. We grew up together and, and all that. And it's a very uncomfortable time to realize that maybe some of relationships that you've had for a long time no longer make sense. They're not serving you. You're, you've grown in different directions. Maybe you're willing to have tough conversations and to, um, you know, even with yourself. Or And some people are not. And... Uh, and then it's time to, and that's okay. to let go. That's okay. <laughs> life not happens, be ashamed. Life happens in seasons, right? There's seasons for everything. And, you know, it's very rare to have people that make it through all the seasons of our lives that stay in our tribe. And if you have that, that's celebrate that, right? But that takes a lot of maturity, a lot of flexibility. Like, that's some next-level friendship stuff, right? But, but for a lot of us, if we keep it honest with ourselves, there will be seasons and times where we have to say, I love you enough to love you at a distance because this no longer serves me or serves the version of who I am. And that's healthy too. I think, again, these are, these are, these are things that if we just talked about it more, how much, you know, again, this conversation tonight, like we're going to leave at a different level of, as some folks, uh, you talk about woo-woo, say a different higher level of consciousness. Vibrating higher. We yeah. are vibrating at a higher frequency. Yeah. We are in L.A. We tonight, y'all. <laughs> here tonight at... All because of crystals this conversation. Out. Pass the crystals around. Here we go. <laughs> so, you know, I know that we're, that we're winding down this night. Uh, this has been amazing. Has this not? Like, yeah, thank you guys so much. I feel so like, much. my gosh, like if, if we just did this enough, right? You know, if, yeah, jo we could if, make this a if JoJo just visit, visited everyone's neighborhood, <laughs> a new Mr. Rogers spinoff. Yeah, See, I, we're ideating. Okay. My little boy's coming up with something. I love that. Let's just play. That's great. I think that it would, there would be a lot more healing if we got together and just kept it real with one another and talked about how we really feel. You know, uh, I agree. I'm going to say this, too. You know, I, you and I feel so strongly about this, that there is someone right now in this audience or someone that is watching that they were drawn, uh, this, the nectar for them was the pain because they can, that's where they're at right now. So I truly believe that this night is a moment of solidarity in our humanness, and it's also to let people know there's hope. So look, guess what? I'm not perfect. Joe's not Definitely perfect. Definitely not perfect. Right? Not perfectly healed. We didn't graduate. The confetti and the streamers didn't come down from the ceiling. I'm still waiting. I'm healed. Here we go. Yeah. No, this is life, right? But to the people out there that are struggling tonight, feeling lost, feeling like they don't have a sense of direction or purpose. They're in their spiral season so much they can't even recognize who they are. They, start, they started doubting to the point where they really believe a lie that says they are no longer that person. What would you want to say to those folks right now, just from your heart? You are not alone in that feeling. What you've been through is your own unique experience, but that lie that you believe is a lie from the enemy. And it is, it has overtaken you and I, I understand that it could be all consuming and when you're in the depths of depression and of self-doubt and just a negative funk it's hard to see a future that you believe in for yourself it's hard to see you being happy and de living a life that you deem to be successful or enough or you know a anything like that but just like you weren't the same you 10 years ago you don't, every single day is a new opportunity to change your perspective, to try something new, to ask for help. Help is out there and it really does make a difference. It can change lives, it can save lives. And, you know, people might wonder, well, why, what's the point of opening up to somebody? Or, or why, why should I let people in? Because there's so much relief and, and power in community and in uh, fellowship and in bonding over shared experiences. 
Because you think you're the only one and you're not. I promise you you're not. Whatever it is that you're going through, whatever lies you're believing about yourself, even if you're just ruminating in the past and you're thinking, well, I've done all these things wrong, that doesn't matter. All we have is right now. All we have is the present right now. And you deserve to have... Um, you deserve to have happiness. We all do. Yes. You deserve to feel well. And it is possible. I know you don't believe it because I haven't believed it in the past too. But your, to, your yesterday does not need to be your today. And your today does not need to be your tomorrow. And I just encourage you to seek out those resources that are available to you. You don't need to have a ton of money. You don't need to have any money to uh, start working on your mental health. This is not just... Uh, for those people who have access, who are able to afford rent or things like that, there are resources and follow Dr. Mondo to learn more about those things and cheat code. But that's what I would say from my heart. You're not alone and music is healing. Music brings people together. Um, you're, you're worthy. You're worthy of feeling good. You're worthy of working up, prioritizing your mental health. Yes. <laughs> yes. Look, we all don't agree on some things, but I'm sorry, I think there's some universal truth. I, I truly believe that a universal truth is that we are all lovable. I believe that. Yes. I believe that we deserve love, right? We're worthy of love, right? We're worthy of a sense of belonging. Sometimes we just have to say, I take a stand for that. So regardless of where you're at tonight, knowing that truth, that might be something that helps start to set you free a little bit. I love the song, Can I Get a Lift? Because <laughs> In that song, what I hear is I hear what I've been through so many times, and I know others have too. It's like this moment where you just can't do anything other than wave the white flag. Because I hear you saying it, it's going to take something more than just myself. And I, I wonder what you mean by that when you say that. Like in that song, it's like it's going to take something more. Like I, I just can't find it. Is that the, you know, what is it? What, was, what were the things that gave you a lift, in a sense? So it's the last song on the EP. It's called Lift. And it was about um, looking for a higher power or looking for something bigger than myself, looking for some help, some assistance. And I've found that in m many different ways, whether, whether it's through spirituality, whether it's through talking to my doctor and um, getting prescribed antidepressants, both have been life-changing experiences for me. And it's something that I s wanted to stop feeling ashamed about um, because I, I can be kind of a hard ass sometimes and be like, you know, you should be healed and it should be fine and you know, blah, blah, blah. But that's- I don't need pills. I don't, yeah, need, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. need therapy. Yeah. Right, because I want to think I'm what, better than those people who do? I'm not. So that's, that's what this, that song is about. It's just saying, uh, after some reflection, I can't get there on my own, I need a lift. I wanna feel like somebody who is hopeful about the future. I wanna be of service to people. I wanna be able to look people in the eye and not feel like a fraud or not feel like this broken person who's gonna cry at any time. And I, I was like, I can't do this myself. I'm not strong enough. So I'll need, I'll need something. Should I sing a little bit of it? You know what? I feel like what better way than to end tonight where if someone knows how to play guitar. Is, is there, there anybody anyone here who can that like knows play guitar really how well? To play guitar? This man oh right my God, here. Chris. Chris looks like he knows how to play guitar. <laughs> Perfect. Can, can we get a lift? Any, everyone ready for that, huh? Yeah. All right. <laughs> All the emotion that, that came from tonight. You got enough time, I think, even to, to do. I don't know. You might even do as much of it as you want. Okay. Uh, again, uh, let's, let's give it up for JoJo, and here's Lyft. Thank you guys so much. This is the first time we've ever done something like this, and I'm, I'm so appreciative. This is so cool to be able to talk about one of my favorite topics, which is mental health. So thank you for being here. And this is Lyft. <laughs> She knows why I'm doing this again. And which way the wind blows? No, I 
got pretty far, but now I'm back in the dark. I can't find a reason, and it's breaking my heart. Got too close to my demons, can't do it myself. I think I need something else. So can I get a lift? I gotta get somewhere other than this. Breathe a little fresh air. And after some reflection, I can't get there on my own. I need a lift. I keep meditating, UV on my skin, go through all of the motions, but they're not kicking in, roll my own prescriptions, but it just doesn't hit, it just doesn't hit, it just doesn't hit, can I get a lift, I gotta get somewhere, We you snap your fingers when we end this, breathe a little fresh air, yeah, and that's some reflection. I can't get there on my own. I need a lift. Mm -hmm. hey, yeah. oh, oh, oh. Hey, yeah. Blue bird at my window. I wonder if she knows that I'm doing so well. That I got myself held So if you're feeling low Don't be hard on yourself Thank you guys so much Give it up for Dr. Mondo, everybody Hey, thank you Thank you all What a night Thank you Live by Live Thank yes. you Warner Records Thank you everyone that came out tonight uh, it's, it's been such a pleasure. This was maybe the first, but it will not be the last. I don't think it's the last. Yeah, thank you yeah. for the perfect first way to kick this off. I love you, everybody. Thank you. Love you guys. Thanks. Yeah.